YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and we're going to jump back into the Faction Focus series. I need to hurry and get these done. And today we're going to take a look at Colchis, which was added in the uh, Black Sea Colonies DLC, uh, as was uh, Chimeria, which we looked at last time. So Colchis is um, similar in some ways to Chimeria. Uh, not, not all together, though. I'm not saying it like they're very similar factions. I'm saying that they're similar in the sense that both of them have some unique strengths, but also possess weaknesses. Those are different amongst the two factions, uh, so let's go through that. So, uh, cult Cultus, uh, as far as the general units, they have access to Noble Blood Cab, which is a great, great cavalry unit, melee cab. Uh, very nice for the price. Colchian Nobles, and um, they also have uh, uh, Hippeus Lancers. So, Noble Blood Cab's a pretty good selection for a general, depending on which factions you're going to come against. If you're coming against a faction that doesn't have melee cavalry or shock cavalry that can really threaten, Noble Blood Cav's a great pick for your general. Uh, the Cultian Nobles uh, have certain strengths. They have a lot of armor. Their charge bonus is pretty so-so. Uh, it's okay, but it's, they're still going to get beat down by um, Barbarian units. They do have expert charge defense, which can help protect them from low armor, high charge units like uh, Wolf Warriors or Naked Warriors. Uh, those type of units, uh, so that the Colchian Nobles, if there is a low armor unit with high charge coming at them, they can uh, use that expert charge uh, defense to their benefit. They have very nice weapon damage for a spear unit. It's kind of an elite spear. Their melee attack, though, is not all that good. It's not like a, a shield bearer or a royal spartan or something that comes also with really good melee attack. Now, when they do get into Hoplite Wall, they are going to have 35 weapon damage and 39 melee attack versus infantry because there's like a hidden bonus versus 5 uh, for the the uh, phalanx units. So it will make them fairly capable in, in melee, uh, but don't expect great things out of them against good mid-tier sword units, or even elite sword units for that matter. Now, Hippeus Lancers, are, they're decent shock cavalry. They're, they're not great. Their charge bonus is okay-ish. Their armor is okay-ish. Um, they are capable, but not uh, hugely threatening for their price. Uh, definitely a nice tool to have in the arsenal of Colchis, though, because then they have a little more uh, potential to be used against infantry factions uh, where you need a hammer and anvil strike, um, or just uh, Hippias Lancers can actually threaten pretty decent melee cav as well if they get a good charge. So, interesting choices for the general, all three of which could hold a place depending on the type of battle and the factions that are going to face off. Now, as far as infantry go, Colchis uh, does have uh, access to Hillmen, which can be very handy because they have javelins and they're very cheap. Uh, they're not as good as Levy Freeman in this role, because Levy Freeman are still 10 talents cheaper and they have a bonus versus large, but still a potentially useful unit. Again, anytime you can get Precursor Javelins in the 200 talent range, it's definitely a potentially useful unit from a meat shield standpoint. They can throw those Javelins at Elephants, they can throw those Javelins at Cavalry, they can throw them at Horse Archers. There's a lot of uses for it. And then as far as infantry, they have Axemen and Cartley Axemen, which you will have seen on other factions, but I'll just briefly review. Uh, Axemen, of course, not so good of an attack, but the benefit to Axemen is that their armor piercing is going to be very good. Uh, they're not going to land a whole lot of hits, but when they do, they're going to be doing some damage across even really high armor. Uh, they don't have a great charge bonus um, or melee defense, and these guys don't have shield wall either. They are disciplined, which can be handy, uh, but these guys are not going to be what you want to use for mainline infantry against other good mid-tier infantry. These will be more of like supporting units or something. Now, Cartley Axemen can actually kind of stand as a mainline infantry. They're not fantastic, but they're not bad because they have shield wall, uh, very sturdy melee attack, and again, it's an axe unit, so low weapon damage, but plenty of armor piercing. Uh, they also have a decent charge bonus, um, and, you know, okay-ish melee defense. Not great for their price, but it's, it's okay. Their health and base morale is nothing special for their price either. Um, so, again, capable, but not great for the price. Uh, though, I mean, against like a Roman Legionary, if you engage Shield Wall properly, these guys can beat like a standard Legionary unit. Um, it'll be very close, though, in the end. Uh, so again, they can be used to help hold and uh, do okay against enemy infantry. Eastern Spearmen, I don't find a lot of use for these guys. Some people still like them. Uh, I, honestly, I think they're worthless. E even with their bonus versus large, these guys serve very little purpose other than maybe getting screening off Missile Cav or something. But they don't have Javelins, so they're not even that good at that. Uh, hoplites, you know, okay again, unit to, uh, to potentially use for holding. Though they're going to be best if you're playing against a faction that also lacks a lot of sword killing power. I think that's when hoplites can be the most effective. If your opponent's army doesn't have a lot of sword power, 
I think that's when it, it may be a better time to use hoplites, because then you don't have to worry about your infantry just getting bowled over and you having to do something quickly about it. And we already talked about the Colchian nobles, of course, because they're a pick for the general. As far as missile infantry, I really like the picks that Colchis has here. They have eastern archers, which are okay. Uh, good range, not the best uh, missile damage or morale, of course, but, I mean, nice range, fairly cheap price. Eastern javelinmen, excellent javelin damage, fairly cheap price, but again, low armor, low morale. Eastern slingers are probably going to be the most useful skirmish unit, I think, available to Colchis. Lots of ammo, and if held till the late game with all that ammo, they can pick apart depleted units. They're very dangerous to horse archers, and they have a small shield to help them when skirmishing. And of course, if you need a skirmisher with a little more shield and armor, these Peltas will provide you with that option as well. So, nice picks, I think, for missile infantry. They're, they're not going to be the best of the best, but they certainly have some good options. Uh, we talked about Hippias Lancers already. Citizen Cav uh, are notoriously crappy, so again, they're there in case you need a crappy Cav, but, I mean, who needs crappy Cav? Uh, Noble Blood Cav, uh, this is going to be very useful for Colchis, and we mentioned them for the general. Horse Skirmishers have really nice damage. Uh, they're very cheap, though, and their morale's not so good, but these guys can potentially be useful against elephants, but with access to Horse Archers, that just seems like a better choice. Now, these Horse Archers do not have the elite uh, bow damage, so they're, they're not a 40 damage. They do have Heavy Shot and Whistling Shot and Flaming Shot, though, so plenty of options on them. Uh, not good morale or armor, and certainly not good melee stats, but it gives you that mobile skirmishing option. So that's pretty much what Colchis has to offer. Uh, they're not really particularly strong in any department, other than they really can um, field very nice melee cavalry. Um, so that's that's probably their only real strength, and their infantry again is okay-ish. Um, it's, it's not great, and they certainly don't have any great elite infantry, but they have decent mid-tier infantry. And that's as far as I'll go, is to call it decent. Um, let's get in here, and here's the match. So my opponent picks Massilia, and I pick Colchis here. And we're going to meet at the Battle of Mons Regius. This is the one that has that annoying village right in the middle of the map. I say annoying because it usually ends up in the players kind of like, one player tries to come around, the other one keeps moving around. It always ends up with some weird maneuvering. And uh, for Colchis, let's see what I've brought here. I've got uh, Noble Blood Calf for my general, and another... And then I've got two more on the flank, so a total of four Noble Blood Cav. My center is probably made up of Cartley Axemen. I can't remember. Yeah, it is. Looks like six Cartley Axemen. Two Hillmen. Four Axemen. And I probably have Eastern Slingers. Indeed, that's what I have. I have three Eastern Slingers. So, uh, coming up against Massilia, I feel confident that Eastern Slingers can handle any skirmishers that Massilia brings. Um, and then infantry-wise, I would feel pretty confident as Massilia... Uh, not super confident, but their units all have a pretty nice charge bonus. Uh, Axemen, though, are going to do pretty well against most Massilian infantry, but knowing that Colchis only has access to Axemen, I almost question whether or not my opponent shouldn't have brought Thur or, uh, Thorax Swords. I think the Thorax Swords probably would have done fairly well versus my Axemen. Um, Massilian Hoplites really aren't bad, though. Very nice charge on these guys, and they could probably give my Axemen a run for their money. They're just more expensive. Let's try and see what all he has. So, hoplites, 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 three hoplites, two Massilian hoplites, two Hippias lancers, two Tarantine cav, uh, citizen cav, another Hippias lancer, so three Hippias lancers, two Peltist, that's all I can see at the moment. Uh, these Tarantine cav are going to come over here and shoot at my hillman. Uh, my opponent's making a grave mistake here, wasting ammo on such a cheap, worthless unit. Uh, this is exactly what I want my hillman to do. And then he also sticks around too long, and this is exactly why I was telling you that Hillman can be worth it. I just got 12 kills on the Tarantine Cav, and they wasted a couple of Javelin Volleys on my Hillman. You have to be careful about when you turn around and retreat. Try and do it whenever Missile's Cav is furthest away. That way you can uh, avoid getting wrecked by getting shot in the back. Though Hillman are going to get wrecked even getting shot in the front sometimes, because they're not particularly good. So yeah, this uh, little village here kind of creates like an aqua village farm whatever it is i guess it looks like a i don't know a vineyard but these kind of look like palm trees of some sort so if it's a vineyard i don't know if you're eating like what what grows on palm trees dates i don't know a date palm <laughs> no idea what's growing there and i guess it doesn't really matter for the sake of the battle so my opponent's gonna waste even more javelins and then bring in his apeus lancers and i do get a small javelin toss into his apeus lancers it did kill one of them, which is not a big deal, but again, 
he's wasting a lot of javelins, getting friendly fire and all kinds of stuff right here against these hillmen, so I'm happy to make that trade. Yeah, he managed to kill several of his own Hippias Lancers there, so again, that's the, the use of him. Now, he does have some uh, mercenary Gallic Hunters that pop up here. A lot of people like to use these guys with uh, Massilia, don't get me wrong, it's fun. I like trying to use them too because they have this snipe ability. I couldn't see them, now all of a sudden they pop up and they actually get some pretty nice shots. Unfortunately for my opponent, it was in the shielded flank of my uh, my Axemen, and these guys are pretty exposed at the moment, so they are definitely going to get charged by my noble Blood Cav. He should have had his Hippias Lancers closer to, to ward me off here, but he's going to take a lot of losses here for his uh, his uh, skirmishers. He is reinforcing with Hoplites, but the noble Blood Cav are very capable in melee, and I'm going to wreck a fair number of skirmishers here. Not as many as I thought, actually. So this didn't turn out near as bad for my opponent as it looked like it would. He got away from that uh, quite nicely, actually. Fairly minimal losses. And then I took some losses on my Noble Blood Cap. Yeah, so that wasn't as bad for him as it looked like it was going to be. Uh, my Eastern Slingers now, though, are going to be able to try and return fire on his Gallic Hunters. And the Eastern Slingers will definitely win in a firefight versus Gallic Hunters. And here I'm actually going to take rear fire from his Gallic Hunters and be chased by a Citizen Cab. So actually a nice turnaround for my opponent there. This is going to damage my Noble Blood Cav quite badly, and I don't need that because my opponent has very capable cavalry on the field with three Hippias Lancers. My Slingers, though, end up shooting his Citizen Cav in the back. He's going to move up his Peltus to come up and try and throw Javelins at my uh, Slingers while his Gallic Hunters stay further back and probably try and get Snipe Shots. Uh, so again, not a bad idea for them, and they might be able to get Snipe Shots in. It's going to be very hard, though, because of this open terrain. Uh, my men are going to be able to get pretty good line of sight. So his Gallic Hunters moving way up here. I don't know if they're targeting my cavalry or what. But again, my cavalry is going to push him back. And then he's getting shot in the back by my Slingers. And I'm going to pull back my charge there and just let my Slingers get rear shots. So that time my opponent did not really take a great um, engagement there. And I, I kind of got the better of him. My opponent definitely will not want to lose the uh, skirmishing fight here. I don't think his infantry is really capable of beating mine. His cavalry, though, could potentially give me a lot of trouble. I got my Noble Blood Cav here beat up pretty badly. This one's already taken a little bit of hit point damage. Uh, and he's got Tarantines over here that if he wouldn't have wasted their ammo on um, Hillman, could have been potentially very useful in this battle. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they really could have caused some damage if he would have just been patient until some of my infantry was engaged. Those uh, Tarantine Cav could have caused a lot of damage, I feel like. So again, my Noble Blood Cav actually getting away Oak here, here, maybe taking a little bit of hit point damage, but it's okay. I'm going to focus fire on this Peltus, try and get rid of them. I have plenty of ammo with my Slinger, so I'm not worried about this. He is getting some snipe shots from his Gallic Hunters, though, that are hidden in this area. You can actually see here just arrows kind of appearing out of nowhere. So that's the ability of the Gallic Hunters to snipe, and they are in range. And this is actually pretty darn nice for my opponent. And I can't see his guys to return fire, so that's the potential benefit of the Gallic Hunters. But notice how as soon as I run my cav up, I can now see his Gallic Hunters and I can put fire on them. They're going to retreat out of range, though, at the same time. So my opponent gets away fairly nice there. He's going to take a few losses, but nothing severe. So yeah, Gallic Hunters can be annoying. And if there was a little bit of forest or something here, it would, it would definitely make them even more effective. I don't really care to just keep up the skirmish fight. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try and move up my infantry and consider an engagement here. Again, the infantry engagement ought to favor me. Uh, at least I feel like it. More snipe shots coming in from his Gallic Hunters into my Slingers. So that's one way that the uh, Gallic Hunters could potentially be useful. But his Peltist are getting wrecked. And he's actually now firing at my Cartley Axeman with his Gallic Hunters. He really... I don't know if he has a whole lot of choice. It, it takes so much ammo from the Gallic Hunters to even just kill my Slingers or my Axemen that I don't see either one of those being a very valuable target to aim at with his Archers. And I've moved up my infantry now to where I can see his Gallic Hunters, and now I'm going to be able to return fire on him with my Slingers. So this is going to be very bad for my opponent. His Gallic Hunters have no armor, and they're going to get shredded by Slingers um, in a long-range firefight like that. He will kill a fair number of my Cartley Axemen here, but uh, again, it's going to be hard for that to be worth it because these Gallic Hunters, I think, cost almost 500 talents. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still quite sick, so I apologize if I have to sneeze or cough. Um, these Hippias Lancers get a decent engagement here. Uh, I kind of interrupt their charge, though, with the Hillman, and then I reinforce with an Axeman, and then I re-engage my Noble Blood Cab elsewhere, intercepting his Hoplites with my uh, Axeman. 
And then again, now I'm going to make his Apeus Lancer stand here and fight my Axemen. And then I can uh, engage my Nova Blood Cav after they've disengaged and won't get another good charge. Eh, they actually do get a little bit of a charge there. They're in diamond formation though, which isn't going to do him any favors, because in those close quarters they're not going to be able to get up to speed and they're not going to get good charges. Again, I really don't see the point of diamond formation. Some of you defend it in the comments, and that's fine. The only thing I really see it being useful for is if you have to go through a narrow gap. Uh, Tarantine Cav here, probably out of ammo since they threw it, uh, and now they're going to be used in a less worthwhile manner. Uh, being charged in here into a cavalry fight like this, they're not going to do much good there. They would have been more handy if he would have swung them through the gaps like this and gotten to my uh, skirmishers. Now the infantry fight's begun. The hoplites will hold for quite a while because my axemen do not have a very blistering weapon damage, but my opponent can't protect his flanks, and I now have Cartley Axemen coming in behind his uh, Massilian hoplites. This is an expensive unit that's not causing much damage, and uh, that's not going to go well for my opponent. So the infantry engagement's definitely in my favor, and my opponent isn't making any real significant gains in the cavalry fight. Um, my noble blood cab is just running charges in and out on this fight while his Apeus Lancers are kind of bogged down. There's Noble Blood Cab and Axemen in this fight, and then my Slingers are able to fire into some of his other Hippeus Lancers and Tarantine Cab as well. And then I'm bringing in even more infantry to reinforce, so this is going to turn into a very bad engagement for my opponent. Um, I really think Thorax Swords would have been a better pick for his infantry rather than Hoplites. They would have been a lot more threatening to my Axemen. Maybe, maybe not win, but uh, just still a better unit in general. And they're cheaper than the Massilian Hoplites. A little more expensive than the regular Hoplites, though. But yeah, my Axemen are out flanking. And it's just a matter of time before these guys get uh, completely wrapped up. So Colchis obviously is a capable faction versus someone like Massilia. Uh, the Massilian players spent a lot of money on um, Hippeus Lancers. And Hippeus Lancers are not a bad cav unit. But I, you know, I'm not sure whether or not I see their usefulness uh, against Colchis. Because Colchis can bring their own Hippeus Lancers and Noble Blood Cav. I would almost see the Massilian cav being more worthwhile. Because then you could support them with Massilian Thurio Spears. Or Levy Freeman, even better. And then they would actually pose a pretty big threat to the Noble Blood Cav, because the two of those units put together cost about the same as a Noble Blood Cav, except it's two units for the one. Massilian Cavalry have a very nice uh, bonus versus large. They are light, but if the Levy Freeman absorbed the charge of the Noble Blood Cav and then the uh, Massilian Cav comes in afterwards, it could potentially be a little bit better for Massilia. And then again, I think the Thorax Swords and maybe some Celtic Warriors or something, or Gallic Warriors, whichever ones they have access to, would have been a lot more dangerous to my Axe line. So I definitely think Massilia has the tools to put up a good fight against Colchis. Uh, but Colchis uh, obviously has some nice tools of its own. I didn't even make use of the Horse Archers, which they have, which could have also been potentially very threatening. Um, but of course, Massilia has access to uh, Celtic Slingers, which can do a pretty good job at keeping Horse Archers at bay. Uh, as well as having access to Levy Freeman, which can also do a good job at keep, keeping horse archers away. So kind of a fun matchup, actually, between these two factions, in my opinion. I definitely was able to get the better of my opponent here, but <clears throat> appreciate him giving me a fun battle there. It's kind of fun actually seeing the Celtic Warriors get some snipe shots. Again, apologize for my extremely grizzled voice at the moment. I'm trying to get over this cold, and it's uh, not been pleasant. Um, so as far as wrapping it up, Colchis, uh, again... Mediocre infantry, uh, I think that's going to be their weakness against sword factions. They're, they're going to suffer. Uh, Skirmish-wise, they can probably hold their own fairly well. Uh, they're not going to match Parthia. Um, they're not going to match Armenia and some of the others in that department. But just a, a decent faction overall. Their roster is pretty thin, um, so they don't have a ton of choices, and that's probably going to be one of the big things that hurts them. So a fun faction to use, though they're probably not a hard counter to just about any faction. Um, eh, I guess there could be a few where they, they would be okay. Uh, but again, uh, not, not a faction that's going to have major strengths in any particular department. Just kind of a fun overall faction with some decent options. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I guess the biggest thing that's important is these Colchian nobles have like cool wing things on their, uh, on their helmets. So maybe that's the most important feature of Colchis. Uh, in any case, hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage signing off for now. I will see you soon.